In this episode of Day Job, presented by Spares Box, we upgrade the brakes on our GR Yaris. Truth be told, the GR Yaris brakes are good. In fact, the factory brakes are very good. For a car that size, they are huge. Many journalists have written about it, and many people have driven it have said the factory brakes are great in the factory car. But you know what? They're even good in a modified car. Uh, as we went 109s, 108s, 7s, 6s and 5s at Wakefield, the factory brakes were still totally up to the task in the GR Yaris. So why would we look at upgrading them if they're so good? Well, truth be told, we've only ever really done a couple of laps at a time, so we don't know how well they'll go over a long stint. And with the larger turbo going into the car, we're gonna make even more power. And additional to all that, not only are we gearing up for World Time Attack Club Sprint class in this car, we're gonna take it to challenge Bathurst with the guys from Spares Box. Now Bathurst is pretty hard on brakes, so we decided we needed to look at an upgrade for the Yaris, not so much for stopping power, but for repeatability and reliability. So we spoke to the guys from V-Sport, who are a braking specialist, to work out exactly what we should put in our GR Yaris, and this is what we've come up with. So firstly, Goodridge braided brake lines. Why do you need to upgrade to braided brake lines over factory rubber? Well, essentially as rubber brake lines get both hot uh, and they deteriorate, they can actually expand when you put your foot on the brakes. If they expand, you don't get very good control over the pedal. You can get an inconsistent pedal. Um, and basically when you switch to braided lines, you get a much more consistent pedal all of the time. And obviously, they don't deteriorate as much as what the rubber lines can as well. Uh, secondly, we've gone for a set of endless brake pads. Uh, the MXPL ones, and they've already been bedded, which is fantastic, so we don't have to go through the bedding in procedure on these pads. These are a street circuit pad, um, and V-Sport said they've had great results with these. I personally haven't used an endless pad before, so I'm pretty excited to try this out. Now, changing compounds can do multiple things to your brakes. Obviously, as you change the compound, it can change uh, the initial bite on the car. It can change the overall bite onto the brake rotor by having a different coefficient of friction. Uh, and the other thing it can do is it can either last longer or last less based on the type of compound it is. And obviously, aftermarket performance brake pads are usually designed to handle higher temperatures. So in the case of these pads, it's basically doing everything we want it to do. It's gonna have a higher coefficient of friction, it's gonna handle higher temperatures so it can last more laps as well as actually have more bite. Uh, it should have more initial bite as well, which will be good for pedal feedback and good for circuit. But at the same time, they still work cold so you can still drive them around on the street. Uh, that's getting matched up with some endless racing super fluid. Why do you change brake fluid? Well, manufacturers obviously put in pretty generic brake fluid in most cars. Uh, brake fluid boils. Now, the higher the rating, .3, .4, .5, the higher the quality, and usually the change of boiling point. So if you have a racing fluid, it has to get hotter before it boils. Why do you worry so much about that? Well, if your brake fluid boils, guess what? You don't have any brakes. The end, done, finished. So, by using an aftermarket racing brake fluid, essentially what we're doing is raising that boiling point. And the other thing it doesn't do is it doesn't deteriorate with heat as much, so it stays more consistent. So that's a pretty important part of the puzzle. We also got these AP Racing brake temperature uh, stickers. The whole idea is we put these on the caliper and it'll tell us how hot the caliper is getting so we can monitor what's going on with the brakes, which is something a lot of people neglect. And the other thing we put onto the brake rotors was some of the temperature paint. And the whole idea of that paint we've put on the rotor is as those colours wear off, it'll tell you how hot the rotor is getting. So there's green, orange and red. So if we wear off the green, yeah, that's okay. If we wear off the orange, eh, starting to become marginal. But if we wear off the red, well, we know our rotors are getting way too hot and we need to look at another brake upgrade solution. So a lot of people neglect the whole brake temperature thing. I know DBA rotors come with that paint from factory, which is good, but putting these on the calipers is a cool little way uh, to monitor the brake temperature. The other thing we're also gonna do is install the Toyota GR Yaris Rally brake ducts. Now, the base model doesn't come with these, and if I was just doing one lap dashes and time attack, and I was just doing the tarmac rally sprint, I actually probably wouldn't bother with these brake ducts. I'm not too worried about the brakes overheating after one lap or a rally sprint, etc. 
And also, believe it or not, not having brag ducts is better for aero, for time attacks. We may block these up in the future, but doing Bathurst, I want to get some cooling to the brakes. So, we're putting in these brake ducts, but the other thing we're doing to make the brake ducts work even better is we're actually going to remove the factory brake heat shields. And V-Sport have given us uh, basically a shim that we put in there. Uh, so we take out the factory brake rotor shield. Why do we remove that? Well, it's so the air from the brake ducts actually get to the brake rotor. If you have a big brake shield behind the brake rotor, any air you put in there isn't blowing onto it anyway. So essentially the ducts just become, I guess, something cool to put on your Yaris. So uh, why do they have brake shields factory? Well, to stop rocks and debris from getting in there. But if you wanna go racing, guess what? Some street things can't stay there anymore. So that's not gonna increase our braking performance as in how hard we brake, but obviously having the brake ducts and no shields is gonna help control temperature better, which makes when we have more consistent brakes and they don't overheat, so we don't get any brake fade. So uh, all up, everything makes perfect sense of why we're doing it. So. Let's get it in the car and give it a try, shall we? The first thing we need to do is get rid of the factory brake fluid. Now, if you have an air bleeder, it's pretty easy. If you don't, go and buy one. Uh, essentially, what we're gonna do with this, you have an air compressor, a line through to here, and you just use it to suck the fluid straight out of the factory brake muscle in the reservoir. And then you go through to each brake caliper, undo the bleed nipple, put this on, and just let it suck the brake fluid out. There might be a little bit left over of the original stuff, but it does get rid of probably 95% of it. Uh, it also means when we take off the braided brake lines, it shouldn't be as messy either. So let's get out the old brake fluid first, and then we'll do the braided brake lines, and then we'll do the pads. Let's go. So we're not a how-to channel, we're more of a what you should do and why you should do it channel, but I will say this, the Goodrich braided brake lines are very easy to fit and when you're working on a near new car, it's very easy to work on. So I've already done the passenger side on the car to work out exactly how to do it and it's all very straightforward. The Goodrich lines come with everything you need to basically bolt it straight on, including the little adapter here that the factory bolt goes through to hold it in the correct spot. My advice is do one side first. Uh, in full so you can always reference back to the other side to make sure you're running the lines correct and then obviously just check it for fitment but yeah very straightforward with the braided lines in the car now next step is all new pads now if you wonder why when you open up the box and they look second hand that is because the guys at v-sport bed the brakes in for you. They have a little sticker on that says already bedded. Now they've already been bedded, that means they have to be clamped on, they've had dust come off them, so they actually look second hand. But when you look at them, you realise, no, nope, all the meat is still there. Why would you buy brake pads that are already bedded? Well, there's two really good reasons for that. One, V-Sport know what they're doing and they'll actually bed the pads in correctly for you. Secondly, it can be a total pain in the ass to bed brakes in when you go to the track. So if we were going to challenge Bathurst in this and it wasn't a registered car, it was a race car, when are we going to bed the brakes in? We either have to do it illegally in an industrial area or we have to use our entire first session just trying to bed the brakes in correctly. So I'm a big fan of brake pads that are pre-bedded in in cars that you're using at the track because it just saves so much hassle. Obviously, as a street car, we could bed them in on the street, but you've got to do a bunch of hard stops from, you know, 80 k's an hour, which is work, dangerous, and you're testing on the street. Um, so yeah, pre-bedded brake pads, Awesome idea from V-Sport, love it. Now one good thing about putting new pads in at the same time as new lines and new fluid is, when you change pads and you compress the pistons back in and you've got the bleeder nipple undone, <laughs> a lot of brake fluid comes out that you weren't able to suck out with the air bleeder. So, uh, Really, really good time to do it all at once. So while we make sure as much of the old brake fluid is now out of the system. Now, as much as I loved having a GR sticker on the front caliper, They've faded on my car pretty badly just due to so much track work and obviously it needs to be removed to make way for 
race car things. AP Racing brake temperature stickers. All right, let's clean it up, get it off. So we've installed the new pad, lines and fluid and we've bled the entire system. The last thing to do is basically, well, top it up. Uh, surprisingly, a lot of people don't know this, but when you put new pads in and you fill it up, you want to go to the high line, but you have to remember, as you wear the pads down, the brake fluid will come down because it needs more brake fluid behind the pads because obviously the pads are getting thinner and they're pushed in more. Some people see that and go race and go, oh, I better top up my brake fluid, but to be honest with you, as your brake fluid comes down from the high mark to the low mark, you shouldn't really be topping it up unless you have an actual leak. If you get down to low because your pads have worn down, then you fill it up to high, and then you go put new pads in and you go to squeeze the pistons to obviously make room for the fresh pads, fluid will go everywhere. So you can actually use your brake fluid level as a bit of a rough gauge of how well your brake pads are doing because I have noticed in this car as we wore the pads down from circuit, the fluid went from high to low. And guess what? The manufacturers have thought of this and that's why the high and low mark are where they are. So now we've got fresh pads, so we top it up to the high mark and that's it. Now everyone knows that mechanics hate engineers, usually because the engineer's way of doing something doesn't work for a mechanic. Now at first glance when you go to put brake fluid into the Yaris, you're like, oh, that's going to be a total pain in the ass. But for once, an engineer thought of something for a mechanic. Unclip that fluid of plastic, and you now have free rein to pour in to the brake master cylinder. Now let's get our endless brake fluid in. So I've overfilled the brake fluid reservoir because I know how much I'm going to lose now as I bleed the brakes, because we totally emptied the uh, entire system and took the brake lines out. It's going to take a while to get it all through the system, but we are going to use the air bleeder to draw fluid through um, and do sort of like an initial fill the system, then do a full circuit of bleed, and then we'll probably do a manual bleed as well just to be on the safe side. So uh, let's get that started. So I've already installed one of the Rally brake ducts off camera because I wanted to see how hard or easy it was. And to be honest, it's really, really easy. You can see it here. That looks a hell of a lot better than just, well, this cover. So how do you install it? Well, you can leave the front bar on. It's pretty easy. You can leave the under tray on. You've only got to take off a section of the inner wheel arch. You can leave all the difficult bits up the top. You basically get a razor blade in and cut this tab out and then obviously file it back to make it a little bit neater. So that's the first thing that you need to do. Once it's up in the air, like I said, you pull the bottom of the inner wheel arch section down and on the inside of the wheel arch, the outline to cut this is actually already there and you can do it with a razor blade in the car. Once you've cut out that with a razor blade, cut this out and then sanded it back to be neat. You basically put this up in with inside where it needs to sit. The bolt holes are already there. Um, the kit comes with two M6 bolts bolt it in, put this bit out through the inner wheel arch, bolt that in, bolt your inner wheel arch back on and it's done. Like it is that easy. 